Hello Football Down Your Listeners, welcome to Podcast 73. I'm Michael Statham and I'm with Mike Bell, the Football Down Your Editor, to talk about everything Dutch football related in the transfer window this summer. Of course, the Dutch football season ended early, there's no Euros this summer, so we've got plenty to focus on with Eredivisie transfer business. What will Feyenoord, Ajax, PSV and RZ be up to this summer? Who will they be keeping in their squads and who will they be selling on for huge transfer fees? That plenty more to talk about in this podcast which you can find available on youtube itunes soundcloud and football nation radio we do hope you enjoy this podcast and thank you for sending in your questions on twitter mike good to talk to you again about dutch football uh we had a lot of questions in on twitter about the transfers this summer regarding every clubs and i think a good place to start uh, is with donny van der beek as he's come back into the picture with a lot of top clubs in europe uh, he's obviously not had a, a full season this season with Ajax, but he wants to remain at one more year with Ajax last summer. He said that this is a, um, one last year to cement his place as a really top player with Ajax. Do you think he's done that this year and do you think he deserves a transfer to Real Madrid or Manchester United as he's being re- rumoured to do so this summer? Do you think he's going to leave or do you think he might stay another year? We had a question from William um, on Twitter, which I'm just going to try and grab up now. Um, and he actually asked, what do you think is his best move this summer? Do you think he should stay with Ajax another year or move abroad to um, Real Madrid or Manchester United? I think it's a difficult one. I think that you know, Real Madrid, we're looking at him based on his performances, probably against them in the Champions League the previous season. I don't think anyone that stayed at Ajax, apart from maybe Ziyech, improved last season on what happened the year before. And I think Van de Beek's one of them that you had to say the season before was more impressive than it was this one. Um, I think that's probably why you're seeing Real Madrid maybe take a step back at the moment. I know it's because of coronavirus and, you know, the transfer fee that they agreed, which is, you know, 50 million, which is, you'd think right now is a lot for Van de Beek. And they're probably not wanting to pay that money right now, especially if, so Dan doesn't seem to be that big a fan, you know, he's holding out for Paul Pogba. Um, yeah, for me, if I was Van de Beek, staying another year at Ajax is a safe option. Um, you'd probably be a leader in the side next year. You might even get the captain's armband, you never know. Um, although I don't, don't think he would get that, but he would be one of the, the leaders of the team. And looking ahead to, you know, Euro 2020, he'd be in a safe environment where he knows he's got to play week in, week out. You probably score a lot of goals and you'll probably definitely be a part of the Netherlands squad. Whereas if he goes to Man United, you know, a few bad performances, he could be out of the team. Um, is there a midfield? Is he really going to slot into there? If they've still got Pogba, they've still got Bruno Fernandes, you know, where does he fit into that? You know, is he a guaranteed starter if, say, Pogba stays? Um, if nobody pays the money for him, he could end up on the bench. That could hurt his chances because he's already not guaranteed to start. For Netherlands, you know, he's got Vijnaldum ahead of him, he's got Darun, Frankie de Jong. He's going to go, want to go somewhere where he's going to be playing week in, week out and have the confidence to, to play his best, you know. Whether that would be staying at Ajax or whether it's an intermediate move to uh, an Everton or a, a Newcastle United or a Tottenham where he's been linked as well, maybe better from. I just think that he's taking a risk if he goes to, to Man United. Um, it seems that they are interested. You know, there's a lot of things getting leaked to the Dutch press saying that they've inquired about him, but it seems that everyone's just waiting around right now for Real Madrid to actually make a decision, which I don't think is going to come anytime soon. Um, so it's probably one that might drag on and drag on a little bit. And then eventually if Real Madrid say no, then Van de Beek's then got to decide whether he, he trusts that my United will give him a, a starting spot each week or whether he just decides to stay, stick around in Amsterdam for another year. Um, which may at this point be the best option for him. Van der Beek has drawn a lot of injects, hasn't he, from sort of mid-tier clubs, but also the top clubs in Europe, as we've been hearing lots of uh, in in sort of football news. He is turning 24 next season, and yeah, he may wish to stay with Ajax another year to cement his place uh, under Ronald Koeman's Netherlands squad. 
However, if you're a near glide English or, or German football fan, you may have looked at someone like David Klaassen, um, who left Ajax at a similar age to Van der Beek. He spent extra time in the Netherlands to develop his game further. But then when he left to go to Everton, he flopped. You mentioned there Van der Beek maybe making a mid-step like an Everton. Do you look at him and, and think, well, yes, he has made some excellent appearances in the Champions League for Ajax. He has got the potential to go and play at the, the highest level. Or do you see glimpses of uh, Davy Klaassen in him and actually, is he cut out for a top league in Europe? For me, I think so. I think he's... As I said on this podcast before, I think he's a better player than David Klaassen ever was. I think he's got more to his game. He's a better finisher. He's, his movement around the box is much better. Um, I think we've seen with David Klaassen, what happened at Everton, and what's happening now with Werder Bremen, is that you know David Klaassen is not as top tier level as maybe you know Frankie De Jong is in the Lictus, and I think Van der Beek can get to that level somewhere. Um, I think he is cut out for Manchester United or Real Madrid eventually. Um, but it's difficult because, as I said earlier on, that Manchester United in the field, where does he fit into that if Pogba stays? They've got Bruno Fernandes. They've got defensive midfielders behind them and they're not going to switch them out for Van der Beek. It's, it's where he goes where he's guaranteed playing time. And right now, you can say that at Manchester United right now. Or you can say that probably at Real Madrid if, depending on if they win the title of the season or not, you know, there's going to be probably be big changes there. Zidane probably might not see him as the best sign. And you've seen players go there and just not be able to live up to expectations, especially Dutch players with the ones that have gone there in the past. Um, there is a risk if he goes to an Everton or, a, say, a Newcastle, an intermediate step and flops like David Carson. But again, I think he's a much better player. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's a tough decision for him. Um, as I said, with the European Championships coming up, he is going to have to decide where he wants to to take that next step in his career. He is getting to that age where he should be looking to leave or wherever he wants to play it safe. You know, look at somebody like Wijnaldum. He's the opposite of David Klaassen. He went to Newcastle first, did the business there, and then now look at him at Liverpool. He's one of the key players and they're going to win the Champions League. He's going to get a new, not win the Champions League, sorry, the Premier League. He's won the Champions League last year and he's going to get a new long-term contract. And that's because he took that intermediate step first and then showed what he could do in the Premier League before going to the top club. So yeah, it's, it's a tough decision for Van de Beek, but I think he is definitely a player that can make it in the Premier League or, say, at Real Madrid. I mean, for me personally, I actually looked at David Klaassen and thought, yeah, he's a decent player. And it surprised me that he didn't make it at Everton. And, you know, he's hardly like um, a leading light for Werder Bremen. He's not a bad player there, of course. But, uh, yeah, I thought he'd go on to do better things. Although I guess Klaassen was kind of like the a leading light in a poor Ajax team when he played there. Whereas Van der Beek is one of the better players in what was an outstanding Ajax side last year. And he played in an Ajax team this year that wasn't quite as um, that wasn't quite as sparkling as it was. Equally, yeah, I think he's a great player and I think he will go to have a great career. I just don't know whether Manchester United Real Madrid is quite for him yet. So uh, it does make me wonder whether another year with Ajax is a good decision. I know Ajax would certainly would love to keep him. Um, and I think actually, you know, we've got some questions about this Ajax midfield. Let's talk about Ajax's transfer summer business this this year. We've got we've got some interest then for Van der Beek. Who's going to replace him in that midfield? I was actually going through the Ajax options for next season, and it's not looking great for their midfield. Although there's obviously one player in particular who's very exciting. He signed a new contract this week, Ryan Havenberg. And we've got a question from Michael. We couldn't, you know. Have enough, Michael's could be on this uh, this podcast. So what he got to? Here's a third. Uh, his question was, what can we expect from Havenberg at Ajax next season? Can he fill the gap left by Van der Beek, um, assuming that he leaves? What do you make of him, Mike? Do you think he's ready to play every match next season for Ajax? Is he ready to be a key player? In my opinion, I think he had some promising performances last season, but it's also a little bit clumsy, and I think that he's got a lot to learn still. Yeah, he's still very raw. He's only 18. Um, I think we ca he came into the side last year and there's a lot of excitement around him. And he saw some flashes of it. He scored a couple of good goals. He's a good box-to-box -box midfielder, I think. Um, he's definitely one for the future. And I think that the fact that he's been given a new contract will give him confidence. And the fact that he'll have a full pre-season with the first team, he'll be 
given the confidence to be a starter next year, and I think he will be a regular for them. And I think he will be one of the players to watch next year. I've got big, high hopes for Gravenberch that he can be a superstar. Um, you know, if we're looking ahead to next season already, I could easily say he could be one of the ones that you know makes a big breakout and could make a run into the Netherlands squad um, if he plays consistently well. Again, the only concerns that have been raised about him is his attitude. Uh, there's shades of Richard Bazur in him, I think. With his attitude, I think he might be a bit lazy in games, a bit lazy in training. But if they can stamp that out, make sure he stays focused. And yeah, as long as he's not granted a first team place, he has to fight for it. I think he will see his best next year. And um, yeah, he's a big top, top talent. I don't think he's naturally a replacement for Van der Beek. I think he's a different type of player. Um, I don't think he'll be playing a number 10 role. So yeah, I wouldn't see him as, as that. But I think that a box to box midfielder for Ajax next year, I think we'll see him start most games. And yeah, I'm really excited to see him more regularly. There's um, only a few Ajax players left from last year who started all those huge Champions League games. And it's looking like the remaining players who are staples of that uh, lineup. You know, with those Frank de Jong's, Matthijs de Ligt's, Andrea, Andre and Arna, he's going to be leaving, I think, this summer. You know, they, they're goalkeeper for many years. Um, Taglia Fika, their left back. Von der Beek's definitely in there. And Hakim Ziyech as well has already gone to Chelsea. It's not leaving a lot of um, quality players in this Ajax team. And it, if, if you look at their lineup for next season, they do need to make some big signings, don't they, Mike? Uh, they're going to need a new goalkeeper. At right back, you know, is Dest going to stay? Or is it going to be Masraoui looking to try and cement a first-team place again? A centre-back, I think next season you're looking at Alvarez trying to make a, a claim for a first-team spot, along with um, Daly Blint. And they're going to need a new left-back. Tagli Fikas going to leave a massive hole there. In midfield, yeah, if it is Kravenberg, you might see Martinez play more regularly in midfield. And for me, I find it really hard to pick an attacking midfielder for next season. Is Jürgen Ekelenkamp going to step up? Is Dusan Tadic going to move to a more central position? You know, if he's getting older and maybe he's lacking a bit of pace to play on the left-hand side. And in attack, it's great news that Davin Elish is going to stay and play on the right wing, it seems. And Pramez might play off the left. Then, of course, there's the um, talk of a new striker. Uh, talk this week that Ajax want to be signing a Champions League quality striker. And we'll, I think we should talk about the striking options in just a moment, Mike. But what do you think about my lineup there? Do you think Ajax are going to be playing that kind of lineup that I just mentioned, or do you think there's big signings that are going to come in and improve this lineup? I don't think we'll see wholesale signings from Ajax. I don't think they'll go after that because I think they've got options. Um, for instance, a left back, Martinez was signed for a left back position, so he could play there. Daley Blind could play there if needed. And then they've got so many options at centre back at the moment. You know, Sven Botman's coming back from Heron Vane. He got rave reviews last year. I want to see him starting. Um, you know, you've got Perskers, you've got Alvarez fighting there. You've got Piri in the young Ajax side. Um, he was looking for first team action in Genie last season. You've got so many options at centre back that you can see one of these players getting pushed out to the left. Maybe Wind, maybe Martinez, maybe Alvarez. Or you could see them signing Castillo, who's on loan from Chelsea. Last season, then they've got Timber as well. So they've got so many options at the centre-back positions that they could move when he's out to left-back. And for me, next year in the Euros, we might say it's wrong, might say it's right, but Ronald Koeman's probably going to play Daly Blind at left-back. So maybe him spending a whole year playing at left-back might be a good thing looking at Euro 2020. Um, you could also see Blind moving into midfield. Um, there's another option there if... They needed someone to to go into there. Um, in midfield, the replacement for Ziyech or Van der Beek is going to be difficult. You know, it depends where they see Anthony. If you see him, maybe as number ten, and um, where he slots into, it, you know, it's a big excitement of of him coming in. But where does he where does he go? They got this Giovanni as well, but he's seen as a you know, young player. Then they've got other youngsters coming through like Hansen, Univar. You know, how many of these will get a chance? For me, I think Tadic will drop down into the to midfield. I hope he doesn't start up front. Um, I don't think that really worked this season. I think he may be a number 10 
I think that could work. But I think the wing positions need to see more of promise, more of Neres when he's back fit, and then maybe Hansen getting a chance off the bench. You might see Anthony playing on one of the wings, and then, yeah, through the middle. If they're going to let Hantuar leave, I think Hantuar's been a good servant for the past couple of years. I think he's still super fit, but for me, I love Kassi and Hantuar, and I would like to see him have one more season as a starting striker for somebody, um, whether that's a Heron Veen or somebody at that level. I'd like to see him move to a club like that just to see what he can do if he's given regular game time. Um, whereas Ajax have got Traore coming through. They've got Brian Brobby, who's probably getting a bit annoyed that his path to the first team is getting blocked. So maybe they'll give him more of a chance. And then of, they're talking about signing a, a versatile Champions League quality forward. Yeah, I think that he'll be the centre forward with Traore and, and Brobby as, as backup. I think we'll see Hunter or even. Yeah. Hunter Lars getting to that age, isn't he? He has to go, I think, now. And Traore, for me, is an interesting option, but cannot be the first choice striker for Ajax next season if they want to compete at the level that they wish to. Uh, a question from Jordan then, and he brings up the fact that Ajax won a Champions League level striker. And he asks us, who are the names on this list? Who, who can they afford that's a Champions League level striker, uh, wage-wise? I think wage-wise... Yeah, you're looking at not... I think it would have to be an experienced striker as well. I don't think you're looking at top-tier level strikers here. I think you're looking at ones that maybe have played games in the Champions League for the likes of you know, Salzburg or or a Fenerbahce sort of level. Um, I think it's going to be interesting to see who they target. You know, Right now, I can't think of many names off the top of my head that would, they would go for. Um I mean, I don't think many mains have been mentioned so far, have they? Um, which is quite quite strange. And usually with Ajax, you hear a lot of names mentioned, don't you? And uh, so far for this striker position, I think you, you, you're right. You've got to look at a, a player who might be playing in the Europa League and is impressed or someone who plays for a, a team that's in one of the um, lesser European leagues. I don't think you can you can see Ajax affording a striker from the Liga or the Bundesliga. They've got to think broad haven't they and someone probably a little bit younger as well who's willing to take a step up to Ajax yeah and I think you know as long as it's not bringing back Ryan Babel you know that's it's not what anyone wants to see but you know they're looking for a striker that's versatile and I think they're looking for one that's maybe got a bit of experience because if they're going to lose Hunter they want somebody that can show a bit of experience we've got that with Tadic but maybe somebody that's just a bit older maybe 24 25 I'd say they're looking at um, but yeah, I've not seen any names linked on any names you see I ask and linked to now where youngsters from Mexico and Brazil and Argentina, which you know, this wouldn't be this striker, so yeah, we just need to wait and see who becomes available this summer, which clubs are struggling for finances. I think that you'll see some bargains become available this summer because of coronavirus, and I ask maybe to pick one of them up. I don't think though they'll, they'll be targeting um, Myron Boadu because I actually mentioned with a lot of Art and Altmar players so far this summer already talk of them um, perhaps signing um, Marco Bizzo as a goalkeeper or uh, Owen Vindal, their left back, uh, Calvin Stengs, their winger or Boadu, their striker. So let's turn our attention to two Arted Altmar now who um, were technically classified as second in, in the Eredivisie rankings this season and their chance for business I think is going to be mainly trying to hold on to the players who have impressed so much this season Mike isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've talked about four of those players there already. Idrissi is definitely going to leave. Um, he might be going to a top, top top club in Russia or, or or perhaps like a West Ham in the Premier League. Um, Turncoat Miners is uh, a player who I think should move on. I, I think that he he deserves a move abroad to a bigger club in Europe. I think the tricky part then comes where do you draw the line in some of these players? Because if one player leaves RZ, then you might see a whole host leave. And that leaves us in a very tricky position trying to sign new players. They're not as um, financially wealthy as Ajax to go and sign a top-level player like a Dusan Tadic to replace the players that leave. So wh where do they go? Do they, do they look to their youth and hope for the best that they can produce a top three, top four Eredivisie finish next season and try in the Champions League? Um, or do they try and keep all the players that they've got? Do you see many of their players leaving? For me... I think it's going to be the same for, for most clubs in Eredivisie this summer because of what's happening around the world. That 
they'll try and hang on to what they've got. And players that leave will probably get replaced with players from the academy, especially at AZ because they've just forked out, I think it's 30 million for a new stadium. Um, I'm sure I've seen interviews with a director saying that you know, they need to try and bring in some cash this summer to cover that. And then there won't be very many funds for transfers because you've got to look at it. They're going to be in the Champions League qualifiers. Realistically, they're not going to be seeded, so they're going to get a hard draw. Realistically, the best you could probably hope for is dropping down into the Europa League. You know, we could say that maybe, hopefully, that the likes of Stengs, but I do would all shine and then they'd be able to get into the Champions League. But that's the odds of that actually happening are pretty slim, if we're honest, and we go by what we saw in the Europa League last season. Um, Adrissi, I think, is the one that's going to go. We've seen him went to Napoli, West Ham. I think, as you say, you know, clubs in Russia might play a bit for him. They might get, you know, like the 15 million, 20 million for him. Um, I'd like to see Coop Miners stay for another season. If they get an interesting offer that's, you know, likes the 20 million, then yeah. Um, I've seen him went to Everton earlier in the, the summer um, from some English newspapers that were naming fees of like 10 to 15 million, which I don't think is going to be enough to buy them. Um, I don't think AZ are that stupid to part with them for that money. Um, but I can see Stengs and Boadu stay in Vindal as well, mainly because the money's probably not going to be there to fork out for them. Um, I don't see anybody really going for the 30, 40 millions. Um, I know Vindal wouldn't go for that, but there's not going to be many people who's paying a lot of money for a left back this summer. Um, whereas transfer business in, they're going to need a new centre back. I think that's the area that they're very, very short in. We've seen Vitens already leave on a free. I think that's a major blow. I think they would have been counting on him for next year and then he's decided not to renew his contract. We've seen Ron Vlar stay in for another year, but he's so injury prone. I think he only played 10 to 12 games in the Eredivisie this season. You can't rely on him. Hazard Yakos is coming back from a serious injury. And then if you look at the academy, there's not very many players in there, centre-back-wise. So I think they're going to need to invest in one, whether they look for one lower down there, Divisi, or look for one in the, the second division. I think that Mickey van der Ven from Volendam would be the main target. So we'll see if they can sign him for a couple of million euros. But then for the other positions, I think they'll go to their academy. I've already seen this week, Kenzo Goodmind signed a new long-term contract. I think we'll see more of him next season. Mo Tabuni's signed, well, he's not signed a new contract, but he's been told by the club that he's permanently going to be a part of the first team next year. I think we'll see them two play a bigger role instead of them going out and signing new players. Um, yeah, I think if you're looking at the clubs that at the top next year, that are going to rely on their academies. I think you can say Ajax have got loads of exciting youngsters coming through and AZ have a lot of exciting youngsters coming through. And we're going to see them next year, which is Quite exciting. They do have a lot of very good youth players coming through and we've got plenty on our website um, about the RZ Youth Academy and the players that are coming through. Um, a very different kind of question here, certainly from Eamon, but it does relate to the players we've been talking about. Is Mina Raiola the Charles Manson of football? <laughs> he screws up careers, but young talents still flock to him. And, well, you're right, actually, Eamon, because if you look at the clients that... Um, that the football agent Riola has, he's got the likes of Boadu, Stengs, um, Daniel Marlon at PSV, Matar Selic has already left um, for Juventus, Gravenberg, uh, Vindal, Rosario, all these players still playing in the Eredivisie, uh, well, apart from Delict. A lot of them will then be perhaps pushed towards transfers this summer by Riola, don't you think, Mike? And the, we saw then here with, with some of these players in the past, you know, that they'll leave early in from the Eredivisie to to a big club, and well, I mean, De Ligt has been successful somewhat this season. But what do you, what what do you think for the prospects of the likes of Vindal Boadu? Yeah, I think you know Real is. I think he was named by Football International as the most influential man in Dutch football, and which is quite crazy when you think of you know, the legacy that Cruyff's had, and yeah, he's seen as. As a, as a villain by a lot of people because of young players that have decided to move a bit too early. Um, but you've got to hope that these young players also have a good head on them. We've seen that Gravenberch was getting 
linked with clubs in Italy because of Rayola, but now he's signed a new contract to Ajax. I think it's telling that it's not a five-year deal. I think it's only until 2023. I think that's Rayola's influence in right, signing a new deal, but not too long because maybe next summer they'll look for a transfer for him. Whereas Vindal and Stengs, he's, Rio is going to want money this summer and he's got to look at the market and he's got to wonder where he's going to get money from this year. You know, Pogba is one of his clients. He's probably going to be pushing him around all Europe. You know, Zlatan is one of his clients. Is he going to stay at Ace Money? Rio is probably looking at himself and what he's going to make this summer. And yeah, maybe that'll mean that one of the AZ players that he's got on his books does leave. But then, you know, the club aren't just going to accept anything for them. I think they're down, both of them are down on big contracts. So it's going to take a club a lot of money to make AZ sell Stengs or sell Vindal. So we just need to hope that if AZ do sell one of them, it's for big, big money that they can reinvest in their squad. Stengs and Vindal might not be ready right now to go to a top club that they're going to link to, you know, the likes of Juventus or... AC Milan, but we just need to see what happens this summer because I don't think all these clubs are going to have the amount of money that they'd usually have. So we just need to see. I think it's going to be a quieter window than what I've seen in the past. Um, but yeah, I'm hopeful that AZ might be able to hold on to them. I think most Dutch football fans should realistically hope for AZ to keep hold of these best players. They really throw cat and of pigeons next year in, in the Dutch league and in Europe too. If this, this, this amazing youthful team can progress even further together as a unit. And it, it's, it also makes for great viewing for Football Index followers because I know that uh, a lot of these top Dutch players can be great investments. A couple of comments sent in on, on Twitter uh, to us about um, some of these players. Pichichi Football F Footy Fan says that he, these two that he's got on Football Index are so Gino Dest and Mohi Ihatarden at PSV. Yeah, that, that's a great choice because... I'm, I'm sure Ihat Arden's going to go on for a great career and he's so young as well and he might accrue a lot of um, shares next season um, playing for PSV. And another one as well from Football Index Ben, he, he was asking who the bigger prospect is out of Calvin Stengs or um, Stephen Berkvine. Who's more likely to start for Holland next season? Berkvine has just killed a big move to Tottenham, whereas Stengs not yet, still at RZ. What are your thoughts on that one, Mike? It's a tough one. Um, both... Unbelievable talents. Um, for me, if I was to pick one that I prefer to watch, it'd be Calvin Stengs. Um, I think he's something different that we've not seen come through in the past few years, whereas Bergvine is similar to a couple of other forwards that Netherlands have produced recently, like Quincy Promise. You know, he's, he's quite similar to Memphis Depay as well and when he came through, whereas I think Stengs is totally different. I think that he has a future on the wing, or if he wants to, he can move into attack and midfield as well. And a big part of Stang's game is his creativity and his, his passing ability, which is exceptional for, for a winger. Um, so for me, Stang's for me is top tier talent, whereas Bergwijn is just below that. I, I, I don't know. I think that we'll see Bergwijn next year is full season that in the Premier League. We'll see if he can handle it for a whole year under Mourinho. Um, but for me, I think that Stengs is something different and I'd like to see him starting for Netherlands next summer because I think he can do something out of nothing. I think that, personally, that Berkvine's a more effective player, but Stengs could have more potential. I just want to see how he gets on next season. I think it'll be a, such a key season in his career, uh, Stengs. Whereas Berkvine has sealed that move and I think now that he's going to have a good future in English football, I hope he succeeds with Tottenham. But yeah, they're, they're both very good players. And, but for me at the minute, I think Berkvine should be starting for the Netherlands. Um, contrary to, to your opinion there, Mike, I think you'll lean towards more Stengs. But then it depends who plays in, in each wing. It has to complement each other, doesn't it? Um, and if Memphis starts up front, maybe Berkvine's a good partner for him as they work well together. I think that brings us on nicely to PSV. Because they, they have been struggling since uh, Berkvine left. Struggling for creativity and goals. They're losing a lot of players this summer. Uh, to mention a few, uh, Schwab is leaving, Pascagli. Dumfries should be making a transfer. Hendricks and Rosario could be leaving, but that might be a good thing for their midfield. Uh, Afalai, Mitroglu, um, is his lone ends. Uh, Rodriguez as well, his lone ends, but could be coming back on a permanent. I actually put together a little PSV lineup 
uh, Mike, and I, they help missing so many players next season. If if you assume that players leave and don't say these loan players don't sign a permanent deal, you could be end end up with Unistar was a goalkeeper. Uh, they they young right back Taser being being the right back, Baumgartel and Vierhaver being the centre backs. They need to sign a new left back. Um, the midfield could be a Rosario or Hendricks. Ihataran perhaps as their attacking midfielder. And I know that PSV wanted to definitely sign a new centre mid central midfielder who is experienced this summer. Up front, it could be Gakpo, Bruma, Medueke being the sort of wingers. Uh, but Marlon's going to be that starting strike for PSV next season. He has confirmed that he's staying with PSV. And well, if you're a Football Index follower, get your money on Marlon because he's going to be scoring a lot of goals next season. Uh, who, who would you add to that, Mike? Are there any players that you'd say, no, they probably will stay at PSV? And um, have they been rumoured with anyone so far this summer? I think there was an interview with um, our new boss, Roger Schmidt, last week. Um, and someone speculated that he's looking for pre free players this summer, um, a new goalkeeper, because he's not 100% sure on inner style. Um, then the other option is Reuter, and I think they were going to see Zoot leave, because um, I think he's lost all confidence in the club, and the club have lost all confidence in him. Yeah, I think the left back position is one that definitely needs sorting. Um, Sadelec didn't look good there. Buscago didn't look good there. They got Rodriguez, but I think his wages are a big issue. Um, he said that he's open to it if they agree a deal with AC Milan, but I don't think they can afford him this summer. Up front, they've got Romero coming back from his loan from Argentina. We can see if he can finally make an impact. They've still got Lammers, they've got Players that are coming back from loans, you know, you've got Dante Rigo, Perot from, from Sparta, and they've got Abispo, who played centre-back for Vitesse all season. I think he's a decent prospect. So, yeah, they've got some good players for, op um, for some of the options for some of their positions. But, yeah, I think that in an ideal world, they'll be targeting three to four players. They're speculating that Schmidt wants players from his network. You know, he's, he's worked in Germany before he's worked in Austria with the Red Bull Salzburg, he knows some players over there, so he, he's going to look at that market. But the players that were linked before, would he go there? You know, the Patrick Van Anholtz, I think he's going to be too expensive for what they have this this summer, and unless they make a lot of money. But he's going to, he's going to be leaving for a lot of money, maybe Dumfries, but he's only going to go for, I think, the 10 million to 15 million bracket. I can't see anyone paying more than 5 million euros for Jordan Hendricks, and I don't think anybody. Anybody that does is, is off their head. Um, Rosario, who's going to be paying money for him? I've seen Napoli linked, but you know, are they going to pay 15 million for him? I don't think so. I think that the two duels that PSV have are Mal and Nye Hatterin, and neither of them are going to go this summer. Maybe somebody will come in for Bruma since he's had a disappointment at this point in the year. Um, but then again, I don't think it'll be for loads of money, so I don't think PSV are going to have bags of cash to spend this year and I think the big one that they were probably hoping for this summer was to bring back Van Hinkle um, who would be for me the player they should be aiming to bring back we'll see what happens with him in Chelsea he's returning to full fitness soon I don't know if the Premier League are going to allow the teams to register players ahead of the season starting again we'll see if he gets into a squad or if he leaves in the summer, what his options are, because I think he would be an outstanding signing for them this summer. Um, but yeah, I can see PSV maybe relying on some of their low knees coming back, like Romero, like Obispo, like Regal. And then we've got to see the likes of Madueke, what can he do next season? Can Gutierrez step it up? Can Sadelec, playing in his, his more natural position of defensive midfield, can he impress? Um, but yeah, Big question marks for PSG because I think that Schmidt would have taken a job thinking you might have a summer of rebuilding, but I don't think the cash is going to be there. So I think it's going to be a difficult summer for them and they're losing a lot of experienced players. So, so yeah, it's going to be a difficult one for them. I'm only a bit left field here and I think that looking at PSG's options, they'll be well um, equipped to go to a 4-4-2 system. Because if you have Marlon and Lamas up front, two decent strikers who could play off each other, you could have, um, I think Gapo would, would suit a left midfield role. And then on the right wing, you might have Medueke, see what he can do there. Uh, you've got Ihatar and pulling the strings. Then you could have, like, you know, your sort of uh, bullish midfielder, the Rosario or Hendricks. If they have to stay at the club, they might 
might work better as being a defensive midfielder. Um, sign a couple of decent fullbacks, and then I don't see why they can't play a four four two system. Do something a bit different because for so long, yeah, their midfield just hasn't it hasn't quite worked. Ever since good um, Guardado left, in my opinion, who was so key in their midfield. Now, the final team we should look at uh, is is Feyenoord. Um, they're in for a summer of well, maybe consistency for a change. Not too many players should leave. I don't think Kochi is going to leave. He's been linked with so many moves away. Arsenal have been linked constantly. Might might um, Leroy Fair leave? Their captain. He's been linked with moves to Turkey. Uh, some loanies might leave. You've got Karsdorp out the door. Um, Edgar EA perhaps his loan's ending and he will leave. Uh, Van der Heiden and Botahin are at the moment are both going to leave on free transfers, but I don't know if any, they're going to be, uh, Botahin's going to be signed down with a new contract. Marco Sanessi is their star defender from last season. Uh, he he's posted on Twitter actually the other day that he's looking forward to playing into Kelp again, hinting that he's looking forward to next season. And they've been linked with um, Brian Linson and uh, Demers from Fortuna Cittard uh, as potential recruits. So maybe not too many players leaving this summer and then therefore not many players signed up. What are your thoughts on final, Mike? Yeah, I think that they're going for maybe a stable summer. I think that it all depends on what happens with Leroy Fair and, and Botahin. Both of them getting linked with Turkey. Both of them not signing the deals, um, which is a bit of a worry at the moment. Um, we'll see if they eventually sign up because I think Leroy Fair has been excellent since he's came back and he was even included in the professional Netherlands squad that was announced just before the season was stopped. They're looking to sign Mark Demers um, from Fortuna Cittard, yeah. There's also Gronigan in the running for him. I think he, if he has a choice between the two. I think he will choose choose Feyenoord. Um, Brian Linson's the other one they're looking at. You know, they failed to agree a contract with him last month, but then there's rumours that they've gone back in from maybe offering him a bit more. I think he'd be a, a good player for, for Feyenoord until Sinistera comes back from his injury. Jorgensen's saying he's not going to leave. They've got Brozovic, the young striker, coming through as well. They signed and looked good last season. And I've got Dick Advocat staying as well. So, yeah, I think it's, it's looking like a good summer for, for Feyenoord. They can get a couple of free transfers in there, consolidate what they've got. They've got so many options for some of their positions. You know, they're losing cars, Torp, but they've got options there. They've got Gertrude, I think I can step into that. They've got some youngsters come back um, from loans. So, yeah, I think that a lot of the teams they look good. I think they've got Somerville coming back from Adder than Hag, you look good. You've got Banis, they've got El Bachitawi coming back from alone. It's going to be a stable summer for them. I think that they look equipped to maybe start next season as a title contender because, you know, if it wasn't for Yapstam going on his horrible run at the start, if it was Dick Advocate from the start, who knows what could happen to Feyenoord last season. Um, so, yeah, I think it's going to be a, a case of them keeping what they've got maybe adding a couple of frees and they'll be set for next year. That's the sort of top four covered then in this podcast. And uh, I don't know if there's any highlights for you, Mike, looking at other clubs in the area of Z this summer. Who, who's done the best business so far? I mean, I noticed personally that Vey 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 Venlo have made loads of signings. I mean, it was, it's at least four signings I know they've made. Um, Arsene and Hark have signed a few players too, but for me, I'm still really concerned uh, about about their, their team, not much attacking Impetus is there. Uh, Pate Bayern are signed um, from Twente on a free, which might be a good deal. Um, they're just looking down now, this list that I've got. Fortuna Cittard have made a few signings. I know that Honingen have signed Vessel Damas um, from Fortuna. It's a good steal. But yeah, is there anything for you that stands out? And who needs to do the most business? It's been quiet so far. I think that some of the signings that have been made have been, been okay, nothing spectacular. So far, um, one that's interesting for me, one to look out for is Oyero Elia said that he's very open to moving back to FC20. I think that they're a club that's going to need a lot of signings this summer. They're losing quite a lot of good players. Um, Aitor is gone. Um, like I said, Verdonk, Trippe, Lang, Busquets, they're all leaving. Um, I think they're in for a big summer of a rebuild. Um, they need a new manager. I think Ron Yans was linked today, so they're going to be a club that's going to be looking for a lot of players. Um, Heracles have lost a lot. They're going to need a lot. I think Adder and Hag, yeah. 
there. They were awful last season, and what could be still in the same league. Pete Bayern's a, a good signing, but it's only a start. They're going to lose a lot of players that are on loan there. Um, yeah, and um, Pex Vola was in a couple, um, and Gustavo Hammer seems to be moving to Coventry City for 1.5 million. That gives them a bit of money to spend this summer because I think that you know Pegs a couple of years ago were a club that had ambitions to move into the, the top six and we're talking about their their plan to be battling for Europe. I think that the season they were in a relegation battle again, so I think that they're gonna have to look at themselves add a few new players. Yeah, for me that clubs like Heracles, Pegs maybe the Heron Beans, these are teams that need to Look at new signings because I think Heron being after to lose the likes of Joy Veerman and um, Mitchell Van Bergen. Uh, Duke is getting linked to a lot of a lot of clubs. And they're losing Odgaard, Halilovic, Van Rijn. They're going to have to make it quite a few signings this summer. Again, it'd be very interesting. Something like Hantuar goes back to the Heron and um, I'd like to see that happen. But yeah, it's been a quiet window so far, which is to be expected. Um, yeah, I don't think we'll see a lot of transfers or big money moves this year. Um, but I think we'll see a lot of frees and well, cheap deals getting getting picked up. Um, like Fortuna Sittard, for example, signing Emil Hansen. I think he's a good signing. And Yannick Van Os from, from PSV. I think he's a talented goalkeeper. So yeah, things could be ones like that we'll see this summer. Yeah, I like your point on SC20. They, they really do need to make loads of signings. At the minute, they stand to only have 10 contracted players next season. Two of those who I'm pretty sure have not played for the first team. So yeah, I mean, a squad of eight players isn't a lot to go by. So you might end up seeing Twente making a good 10 signings this summer to try and plug some gaps. Yeah, they've got almost no uh, forward players or, or defenders, actually. Um, so lots of chance of business ahead, Mike, and I'm sure podcasts will be coming up soon too. But yeah, uh, thanks to the chat and, and thanks everybody that's listening too. And we'll have plenty more coming from Football Lani, despite the Eredivisie not being back on until, well, September at the moment. It's interesting, isn't it, how um, all, all sort of top leagues in Europe are trying to get back started. And then, you know, there's, there's Ligue 1, uh, the, Bel- the Belgian top flight and the Dutch Eredivisie who seem to be losing out on all this. Yeah, it's a shame, I think, that I put a poll a wee while ago saying that, you know, did Netherlands make too hasty a decision? I know it wasn't the KNVB, it was the Dutch government. If you just got to look at, you know, Germany and what's happened there, and it seems to all be going fine. And the fact that all the other leagues are, are coming back is, makes you a bit sad that their division isn't, because it could have been one of the most exciting leagues in Europe with the title race between AZ and Ajax and Feyenoord steaming up as well. So, yes, it's disappointing, especially with all the other leagues coming back. But, you know, as you know, Dutch football fans, we've got a lot to look forward to. You know, you've got, we get to watch Frankie de Jong for Barcelona, De Ligt for Juventus, a lot of players in the Premier League. We could see the Bundesliga the past few weeks. There's, you know, Xerxes, um, there's a lot of talents. Bogard made his debut. Youngsters, there's Dutch players all over Europe that we get to watch. It's just a shame we can't watch our beloved air visit back. But we'll see that coming back in September, hopefully. Yeah, fingers crossed. Thanks, everybody, for listening, and more will come soon. That is back up! That is back up! That is it! Yeah! 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 That is it! Yeah! Yeah! That is Klaassen! Goal!